Jewish progressives born in Brooklyn but famous in Vermont. No, I'm not talking about Bernie Sanders, but Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield of Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream. Ben and Jerry turned a gas station ice cream parlor into a global phenomenon in Bernie Sanders' hometown of Burlington, Vermont. Since then, they've modeled what a lot of people say a progressive and massively successful business can actually look like. And they have continued to be outspoken on all sorts of issues, so it's no surprise they're going all out for Bernie Sanders for president. They've even made a Bernie ice cream. I am thrilled to welcome them back to the show. Jerry Greenfield, Ben Cohen, welcome to the program. Good to be here, Laura. Let's go back a little bit and talk about the two of you, then we'll talk about Bernie and what he's meant for you, what his policies have meant for you, and what brings you to this position. But to give people a bit of background, Ben, um, tell us how you grew up. How did you end up in Burlington making ice cream? Ah, well. Um, Briefly. Well, first, first, <laughs> first I met Jerry in uh, seventh grade gym class. We were the two slowest, fattest kids in the class. <laughs> Then I became uh, a failure as a potter. Uh, nobody would buy my pottery. Jerry became a failure as a uh, med school applicant. He got rejected from every school he applied to. And uh, we ran into each other and we said, well, we're both failures, what are we gonna do? And we decided to start an ice cream business. And Originally, we wanted to open in a warm, rural college town because we wanted to live in a rural college town. And we discovered that all the warm ones already had homemade ice cream parlors. And so we decided to throw out the criteria of warm <laughs> and ended up in Burlington, Vermont. So you're really an inspiration to failures everywhere. Yes, we are. And w so we ended up in Burlington right at the time that Bernie was starting his political career, uh, first as mayor of Burlington in the 80s. So let's talk about that. What difference, what was his, his platform in those days, if you can remember, and what difference did his policies make to a, a small business like yours? Well, so Bernie was running against the entrenched establishment uh, political machine Democrat incumbent who had been there and, and Bernie ran uh, to everybody's surprise he won by 10 votes and became mayor and uh, we're talking 1981 was it 80, yeah 81? yeah and uh, you know uh, probably Ben can tell you better but one of the early issues there was around development of the waterfront at Lake Champlain which prior to Bernie coming there uh, the idea had been that it was going to be sold to developers and mm -hmm. they were going to be having high-end condominiums and, and the public was essentially going to be shut out. And uh, Bernie kind of came in as mayor and started talking about this idea of public access that you know nobody in Burlington had ever heard of before, but essentially what he was saying was that the waterfront of Burlington belongs to all the people of Burlington and uh, we shouldn't allow it to become uh, privatized and sold to these developers. And he ended up uh, fighting the developers all the way to the top court in the state, and he won. And today we have the most beautiful public waterfront in Burlington that's open to everybody. Mm. So public yeah, access was one thing. Another thing that I think he was very early in talking about was local purchasing, buy local, um, cultivating local businesses as opposed to trying to bribe outside multinationals to come in. Yeah, Bernie established the Community Economic Development Organization, which was responsible for that. And, you know, it's sort of funny because people outside of Burlington and Vermont have this idea of Bernie as not supportive of business. And yet, that's not true at all. Bernie has a very practical and pragmatic uh, approach, and he's a very good manager. Uh, he made the city run really well, uh, and if you look at Burlington now, it is the envy of mm. other cities. And so how did he help you? Well, how, did, uh, what, how did his policies help you, broadly speaking? You know, it was a friendly business environment. Uh, it really encouraged uh, local businesses and encouraged uh, patronizing local businesses. And made it 
easy for us. How important do you think that word socialist is in the whole story? Because a lot of people are incredibly struck by the fact that somebody who's calling himself an independent democratic socialist is also getting this kind of crowd in a country that's been so big on red baiting over the years. You know, personally, uh, I, I call him a responsible capitalist. Uh, you know, I, I think that, yeah, I mean, he's the kind of socialist that, that, that believes in social security, that mm -hmm. kind of socialism. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, he believes in health care as a human right. Uh, I mean, I personally think, uh, you know, calling himself a, a democratic socialist uh, harms him in terms mm -hmm. of the general population. And uh, I mean, it, I, I've seen him in action. I mean, the guy is very much a capitalist, mm -hmm. uh, but he's just saying that we should have a form of capitalism that uh, has many more social benefits to it. You know, and you're, you're asking who is coming out to see Bernie, mm -hmm. who's getting excited. I think it's people who understand fundamentally that the system is broken. Yeah. That as Ben said, the economic and political system is rigged. I mean, we all know the system is rigged, right? Everybody knows it. The question is, is there something you can do about it? Are you willing to get committed to doing that? And people are joining Bernie's so-called political revolution because it's going to take millions of people to do something about it. But the movement continues, I guess, is what I'm yes, hearing. That yes. no matter what happens, the mobilization, I guess the expectation and hope is that this mobilization of two million contributors will change politics beyond just this year, you think? Well, I think it signals the end of political parties. You know, I mean, I think it used to be that political parties were necessary to raise the money mm -hmm. that you needed and to gather the volunteers that you needed. I think that Bernie is showing that that's not really required. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, all the the whole democratic machine is arrayed against Bernie. Uh, you know, the Democratic National Party, which is supposed to be neutral uh, in this primary race, is throwing all their support behind Hillary. And despite that, yeah. despite that, he keeps on winning and he keeps on uh, doing better and better in the polling uh, versus Hillary. And finally, you know, if, uh, you know, just the other scenario, we laid out one, if the other scenario is Hillary Clinton ends up at the end of the day, thanks to the superdelegates and others with the majority that she needs to be the nominee, what's going to happen to all of those Bernie voters? And will you vote for Hillary at the end of the day, if you have to? Uh, I'm, I'm really not sure. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm so sick of the Republicrats. Uh, you know, I mean, they're, both parties are, are in bed with Wall Street and Big Pharma and, uh, you know, the chemical companies. I mean, you name it. Uh, I, so, uh, I, I mean, so many of the people that are out there supporting Bernie are people that had checked out of politics, yeah. that, that said, you know, I'm not going to be involved in that system because it, it's not addressing any of the mm -hmm. things that I care about. It's mm -hmm. not really meeting any of the my needs. It, it's the both parties are serving uh, the corporations and the ultra wealthy, and you know I I I personally don't believe that a lot of the people that have been activated by Bernie are gonna are gonna be voting for Hillary. Jerry, well. Uh, I'm, of course, doing all I can to get Bernie nominated. Uh, unlike Ben, I probably will vote for the Democratic person only because, uh, in my mind, the, the Democratic nominee is going to be so much better than anyone the Republicans are currently looking at. And uh, I'm hopeful that uh, going forward there, there will be no turning back, that, yes, Maybe not everybody will stay activated who's become activated, but uh, you know one of one of the things Bernie says in his rallies that everybody relates to is enough is enough. Yeah, it's it's bull. Enough is enough. We either take the country back for the people, 
or we give it away to the corporations and the super wealthy. It's it's that simple. We should clarify you don't own the company anymore. No. Uh, tell don't. just briefly what happened. Uh, it's and you're still out there and still associated with it. You're like the ambassador, is that right? Is that how it works? Well, the company ended up getting sold. Right. Uh, Jerry and I struggled to keep it independent, uh, but the company was public at the time and uh, you know, the way the Security and Exchange Commission laws work is that if, if some other entity is yeah. offering a very high price for the stock, the board of directors is compelled to, to sell it. Uh, so despite our best efforts, the company did get sold. It's no longer owned by us. It's owned by uh, Unilever, and uh, we are technically employees of the company. You touched on it. That the current business law required you to sell out when you got an offer. Um, what might have changed that? So, so one of uh, the changes that's been happening is the uh, beginning of what's known as B corporations, yeah. benefit corporations. And those are corporations that are now chartered in probably 30 states around the country and in countries all over the world as well. And when companies voluntarily decide to become a B Corp, they say that part of their purpose is public benefit. They are not simply about return to their shareholders. And it is this wildly growing movement. Yeah. Uh, it is amazingly popular. So if Ben & Jerry's had been a B Corp back then, you could have resisted the buyout? You know, I think it's probably one of the steps we could have looked at. It's pretty hard to go back and say, what could right. we have done? But. Uh, we, we certainly did not succeed in yeah. staying independent. Well, it's fascinating because I think maybe that was part of the c the thinking that went into the B Corp was watching what had happened. Because didn't it follow by not too many years? You know, it was probably one of the things that yeah. they thought about. But the idea, I mean, B Corp is very broad. It's not only uh, a charter issue, instructional tra uh, changes to corporations. It's about... Uh, assessments of corporations, looking how they do their community activities. So it's it's pretty broad and it's also pretty deep. Yeah. All right. Thank you both. It's great talking to you. Good luck on the campaign. I hope you get a lot of those signs distributed. We'll make sure <laughs> people have information about how to get their own sign at our website. Uh, ben Cohen, Jerry Greenfield, thank you so much for coming in. Great seeing you, Laura.